Hi, I'm Tim. Please join me in this video as I show you a new map website released by the FAA that gives precise information on FRIA's where they are locations, FRIA being the FAA recognized identification area. Let's get to it. As part of the March 2020 implementation of remote ID for drones, and I'll have a little bit more on that in the video, <clears throat> there are chapters down below if you want to jump ahead. The FAA agreed with various pilot user groups to set aside certain aspects of airspace called FRIAs, or FAA Recognized Identification Area, where modelers could fly their RC models, drones, fixed wings, or helicopter without the need for any remote ID. This video is focused on recreational pilots. If you're a commercial pilot under Part 107, there are different rules that apply for that. So the free is a pretty good deal because nothing changes. When you fly your RC model <clears throat> with regards to remote ID, you do not need anything on the remote ID. You just have to keep visual sight of your model and you're free to fly as you were before. There's probably about 1,800 FRIAs in the United States. Uh, they're associated with community-based organizations like the Academy of Model Aeronautics or certain educational institutions. And what the FAA has done now is they produced an online map that's quite interesting. There's different maps underlays, whether they're pictures or, ge or geographical maps, to see exactly where the FRIAs are, the boundaries of the FRIAs, and you can click on it to get information when they were approved <clears throat> what club they're associated with, and other relevant information to that free. And we'll cover that here in a second. But right now, let's just take a very quick uh, review of remote ID and um, what that means for modelers and how that ties into FRIAs. Over the past few years, if drones have become more and more ubiquitous, unmanned aircraft, Congress, the FAA, and other groups are trying to figure out how to properly integrate drones into the national airspace system. And the one thing that came out of uh, Congress to the FAA <clears throat> is that the FAA had come up with some methodology to identify a drone. So the local authorities, could be the police, the FAA, wanted to identify the pilot of a drone or RC model aircraft, they would have the ability to do that. So it came up with this concept called remote ID. It went through a bunch of iterations. It became finalized in March of 2024. And essentially for recreational pilots, any plane that is 250 grams or over, that's about 8.8 .8 ounces, needs to be registered and it needs to fly with a remote ID. There are two basic types of remote ID, standard and the broadcast module. Standard is remote ID built into the RC aircraft. The only RC aircraft that have standard or built-in remote ID are drones. Uh, that has been the uh, ruling since December of 2022. So if a modeler buys a drone over 250 grams today, and this is being filmed in July of 2024, by definition, you are remote ID compliant. For other models like fixed wing RC, helicopters and so forth, models that you build at home, they do not have remote ID installed on the radio. You have to buy a separate broadcast model that you plug into your aircraft, uh, the receiver, other power source to broadcast the model's information for remote ID tracking purposes. Uh, this is an example of remote ID. It is the flight test easy ID. This is the entire system. You simply plug it into a, a port on your receiver. It locks onto the GPS uh, signal and you are remote ID compliant with that. But because there are a lot of recreational hobbyists that just would fly <clears throat> with a community-based organization like the Academy of Model Aeronautics, they're going to keep visual sight of their aircraft a compromise was worked out between the FAA and modeling groups like the AMA to create a concept called a FRIA, or an FAA Recognized Identification Area. There's about 1,800 FRIAs in the United States, the vast majority with the Academy of Model Aeronautics. Uh, there are FRIAs uh, that will be assigned to schools and other educational institutions. <clears throat> and what the FAA has done now is they've created a dedicated map that shows information on these FRIAs with a graphical overlay of maps and um, satellite imagery so that you can see where the FRIA are, the boundaries of the, um, of the FRIA operation. So FRIAs are a very good deal for recreational pilots. If you're a member of a club and you're flying in FRIA airspace, you simply fly your model as you were before. There's no need for any remote ID requirement if you're flying within the confines of the FRIA and you keep sight of your RC airplane. 
So let's take a brief look at the FAA's new map of FRIAs. The website location is in the description. And we'll just kind of walk through a couple of the underlays and to see how it works in case with the uh, RC club that I fly with, the Hilltop Flyers here in Georgia. And we have a look here at the FAA's Recognized Identif Identification Areas Map, or FRIA. <clears throat> there is a base map gallery of different underlays you can put on this, so you just experiment. Notice the layers in this dedicated one just has FRIA as either community-based organization or EDU or educational. You can type in the location. It's a map, so you have, it doesn't know the RC clubs. The AMA website, we'll discuss in a bit, has that. We'll go to Loganville, Georgia, near where our club is. Here's the map. You can see the Hilltop Flyers a little bit to the um, southwest of the town of Loganville. The map to navigate it, I've had pretty good luck using the cursor keys to go up, down, left, right, then the plus, minus in the upper um, left-hand corner to zoom in. So that red square is the FRIA, FAA Recognized Identification Area, approved by the FAA for Hilltop Flyers. We'll zoom in a little bit, use the cursors again to center up. Uh, very nice field. It is out in the country uh, in some um, farm fields. And we'll take a look at another underlay that will give a better view of satellite imagery overlaid with roads. And for that, uh, we'll take the imagery hybrid. So there's a picture of our field. You can see the listed roads there, very accurate. The access road, let's zoom in a little bit more. You can see the, um, the parking area and the uh, runway, that black area. That is our FRIA right there. Now we can click on that red square to get information on the FRIA. So once we click on that, this is what the FAA, the technical name of it, uh, who owns it, where it comes from, the uh, dates that it is valid, the address, and other information. We are a community-based organization with the FAA. One of the drawbacks of the FAA map is you have to, it's, it's not easy to find a specific club. When you type in the location, it'll bring you to a city because it's tied to that map. So you have to pick a city or locality near the flying site to eventually get to uh, your club to see where the FRIA is. If you'd like a very easy way to locate a club with a FRIA uh, close to where you live, the best way to do that is the Academy of Model, Aer Academy of Model Aeronautics website. Again, the um, website will be in the description. But let's take a quick look at the AMA website and just a super easy way to find FRIA RC model airplane fields. This is the AMA um, website, the main page. We could go to the club finder, <clears throat> either type in the club name or the city and um, state where you want to look for your uh, RC club. So we'll take Loganville, Georgia again, which will be our Hilltop Flyers. Just type that in and select Georgia from the drop down menu. And that'll take us right to the club finder page. So there are activities permitted. You can select what you want or don't want in terms of boats, cars, turbines, and so forth. We'll pick a range. Uh, let's just pick it within 25 miles away of Loganville. And this is the key. When you click that, these are only free of sites. So go there. And now these are all the listed clubs, each one being a free of club. Uh, there's the Hilltop Flyers again for club details. It's, again, it's just a very user-friendly uh, website. Contacts, uh, websites, emails, everything you need to know about that club to include a map of where the club is located. One other item I'd like to point out, when the uh, FRIAs, the FAA Recognized Identification Areas, first came into being, there's a lot of talk, well, this is going to be a temporary thing. The FAA doesn't like it. They're going to go away. And that's just not the case. The FRIAs are a very useful thing for the FAA to accommodate recreational RC pilots, but what's important is what's in the language of the Authorization Act for the FAA. This is legislative language that directs the FAA what to do. The most recent five-year, actually it's about a four-year FAA bill was passed in um, May of 2024. It spells out in a bill from Congress signed by the President everything that the FAA is required and authorized to do. And in Section 928 on Recreational Operations of Drone Systems, it states this section also directs the administrator to prioritize FAA recognized identification um, area request submitted for fixed sites. 
So what they want to do is have the process work even quicker to approve FRIAs for requests to come in for fixed sites, language to be um, further understood if you go along. So FRIAs will be along at least through 2028 with the support of the FAA Reauthorization Act. Thank you for joining me in this video. I think the FAA has done a pretty good job with this um, FRIA dedicated map so you can see exactly information on your FRIA. And there'll be a lot more developments as we go on um, understanding using remote ID and flying our RC model airplanes in the national airspace system. Thank you. Peace.